All right, so we are here now for another social marketing hour, and I have a very, very special guest with us today. Uh, this individual is somebody that goes way back in my evolution as an entrepreneur, and um, I actually got to hang out with him in, with him a little bit a few weeks ago. We got to connect quite a bit, and I told him my story uh, when I was broke, when I had uh, no no particular knowledge of my potential when I had just gone through a bankruptcy a few years before and I had no degrees hanging on my wall. Uh, I was introduced to this individual's course. He had launched a course, which a lot of you guys have heard about, uh, which is called Amazing Selling Machine. And that was my first ever introduction into the world of entrepreneurship, into the world of business before I even knew that there were other people selling their own stuff on Amazon. Um, I was invited to attend uh, a training by one of his affiliates, and uh, I was sold on the on this particular course, and my life got flipped upside down for the good. Uh, fast forward, let's say somewhere around a decade later, I produced fifty million dollars a year in revenue, and I told him this story. Like I think sometimes you don't really understand the effects that you personally create with your content, with your teaching unless you actually get to hear these stories. And um, he was at the beginning of that evolution for me. Uh, this individual uh, has sold more courses online than anybody else that I've ever met by a long shot. Uh, I think we talked about a number of 35,000 courses sold uh, of Amazing Selling Machine. It's been quite an incredible journey for him. He's actually uh, dramatically grown his own brand recently over the last couple of years, making it one of the fastest growing companies in the country. Not only that, the fastest growing coffee brand in the United States of America, which is amazing for those of you guys that are coffee fans and coffee lovers. He is the founder, co-founder of a company called uh, Life Boost Coffee. And uh, Mr. Matt Clark, it's such a pleasure to have you here today for us to give value to our audiences in the subject of e-commerce and the subject of entrepreneurship. And uh, we're just going to provide a shit little value, the subject of e-commerce and the subject of what's happening today, what's working today, what are you working on? We'll go over a little bit of your story, obviously. Yep, uh, yep. I think most people in my audience, they already know who you are, obviously. And um, we should be like uh, straight, straight into the content and the value. Are you back in Austin or not yet? Uh, in a month from now, basically. Okay, so where are you at? In Colorado. Oh, in Colorado. Yeah, we already sold it and stuff but we basically here for another month wow and what did that what made that change for you guys um kind of realized like it's nice to be somewhere like beautiful like here it's got all the mountains and all kinds of like unlimited activity and stuff but i feel like a couple things like one is like got way more back focused on business stuff like since we've been here and so that's easier to do in austin for me but then also i've kind of realized that like you could be somewhere like super nice but you're still missing something if you don't have like the people you know and stuff around. So it's just kind of a, a learning lesson because you know, always thought about moving. Oh, let's move to Hawaii. Let's move here, or there, or whatever. But it's kind of like different when you're actually there, and then you're kind of like, okay, this is cool, but it's like, how many times can I go like hiking or skiing or whatever? It's like <laughs> without all your like people around, I guess. Might as well just have a vacation home, right? And just take off whenever you yeah. feel like it. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel it's... like yeah. I feel like that's probably what we'll end up doing is having like a home base and like another house or something somewhere. I think you build such a big community in Austin that it, it's just like something that you inevitably will miss if you're not there. Right. Yeah. And then like for us, it's kind of like we're from Texas. And so we know all our friends and family. And Austin is probably like one of the top three places in the U.S. to be right now for business stuff. Absolutely, so it's man. Like it's, hard, it's hard to beat that. Booming. Booming. Absolutely. Yeah. That makes sense. So you guys are uh, how long did you spend in Colorado? About a year. About a year. Okay, that, that was enough. You guys were thinking about, oh, we're going to move here permanently? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was kind of like, that was a thought. I mean, we kind of knew that there was a chance we'd end up back in Austin, but we were like, well, I mean, like on paper, it makes sense. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crowded, like nicer, like you got all the nature and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, you can go on like the worst hike here and it's better than like the best one in Austin. Um, but, you know, you can only do true. so much of that, I guess. That's true. And also, there's nothing like the snow and the mountains uh, during, yeah. during the winter season. You're not getting that in Austin for sure. No. <laughs> not that part. Yeah, so, uh, so Matt, so why don't you tell me a little bit about, I mean, uh, I, I actually got to connect with you a few weeks ago uh, in Miami uh, in the Grand Cordon uh, Influencer Mastermind over there, and uh, you told me a little bit about what you were up to. 
Yeah. Uh, it was a little surprising, uh, obviously, like uh, after accomplishing so much success on Amazon um, and teaching so many people, I think you'd done somewhere, I think the number that you guys came up with is somewhere around nine to $10 billion of revenue have come in through your teachings, right? But I asked you, what are you guys doing right now with Life Boost? And you said 90% of your revenue is happening off of Amazon right now. So can you explain to us here why such a dramatic shift for you guys on your side? Yeah, I think you guys started seeing some of the things that, um, you know, people are seeing now and they're experiencing on Amazon. Like I was kind of seeing that stuff like years ago, which is kind of why I got a little disillusioned with some of the stuff, you know, with Amazon and what we were doing, because I was like, there's such a massive opportunity on Amazon. And like you said, it's like, you know, it helped, it helped you out, helped a lot of people, you know, out, you know, people have built multi-million dollar businesses off like pretty much a hundred percent Amazon. Maybe they had like a few percent Shopify, but at some point I was like, man, this is super annoying. Like building a business where it could be taken away overnight by like an Amazon policy change or even like cut in half, you know, by like a competitor leaving a bad review or something like that's crazy. Like you have like such little control. You can do all this work and time and effort. And then at the end of the day, you have very little control. And so I started thinking about that thing, like, you know, maybe three years ago or so, and then at the time I was talking with, like I used to have him on Skype, uh, Shopify's affiliate manager, a like, guy that was like, you know, probably with him when they had like three employees or something. And I just knew him from back in the day and stuff. He was like, yeah, he's like, there's these people out there building these Shopify stores that are doing like 40 million a year, 50 million a year, 100 million a year, like out of nowhere. Um, and then I was kind of kind of looking at the market and seeing what was happening. It's like, you're taking like a good product on a Shopify store and then combining it with almost like infomercial style marketing on social media. You know, like with a quick sort of attention grabbing, you know, problem focused ad on Facebook or Instagram, especially Facebook at the time. And so I started looking at these things and I was like, I feel like there's a massive opportunity here that I want to kind of figure out how to do. And so that's kind of what led me back into Shopify and, and ultimately the coffee business. Oh, that's amazing. So, so uh, yeah, that, that you bring up some really good points, Matt, because obviously I've always said this, uh, I believe in the Amazon opportunity. I've always believed in it. It's the way that you want to approach it is almost like it's a launching pad. It's a vehicle that you can use to try to generate cash flow, so you can actually build a real business. Because until you don't actually build it outside of Amazon, Amazon wakes up in the wrong side of the bed one day and it's over for you, right? So it's such an important point to 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 keep in mind that it is their platform. They're lending it to you. You don't control it. They control it. If they don't like something that you said, they can shut you down. If they don't like what a client said about you, they can shut you down. That's the beauty of like what you're doing, right? And what I'm doing also on Shopify and our, on e-commerce that we control our own destiny, right? We don't get shut down because we are the ones in charge of the particular platform. So what are your thoughts now, now right now, Matt, being the one that has sold the most courses on e-commerce, on planet earth, that one that actually created this third party seller revolution uh, we, we, via amazing selling machine. What are your thoughts right now on the Amazon platform? Because I still believe in the opportunity in a big way, right? Amazon is still like, I'm breaking records every month on the Amazon side of, uh, of things, but not without breaking records on the e-commerce side of things. So I try to get them to go together. What are your thoughts on the Amazon platform right now in 2022? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we still use Amazon. Like we still sell 10 to 15%, you know, every single month you look at it, like that's about what we produce on Amazon. Um, I think it's still a great place to sell. Cause I mean, look at it. I mean, they still have like hundreds of millions of people shopping there. And a lot of those people, it's like, they're going to go there first because they got their credit card number store, shipping's fast, shipping's cheap. They're already ordering 15 other things. You know, if, they're, if, they're, if your product, you know, if you were going to go into like a grocery store, somebody doesn't want to go to 15 different grocery stores. They want to go to once. And so I think that same thing kind of applies to some extent online. So to me, it's like, it's a platform you use to your benefit, but you don't build your entire business dependent on it. Um, and so that's kind of how I see it and how we use it. And so I still think it's good to produce sales, good as like a compliment for your brand, good for a lot of reasons, but I don't think you build your entire livelihood around it. I think it's almost better now to have your own website. And we talk about Shopify, but Shopify is really just like a shopping cart software. There's other options, but to me, it's kind of crazy to use anything other than Shopify, but like Shopify or selling on your own website, use that as like your foundation and then use all these other platforms like you can use uh, walmart.com, Amazon, physical retail, like literally anywhere else you can use them, but use Shopify as your foundation and Amazon just as kind of a compliment. Yeah, that's absolutely such a good point because um, back in the day, if we go back 10 years, building a website, 
used to be something very complicated and you had to maybe go to India to get developers or you have to hire all these fancy, uh, high, highly trained people and, and spend a lot of money. But now Shopify actually presented a platform that you can drag and drop things and build things out very simply and have your own cart. So um, I'm also a big fan of, of Shopify. I've made transitions over the years. Uh, there's other platforms out there, Magento, WooCommerce, OpenCard, et cetera. But it really is something that makes it very simple for all of us to build out our own e-commerce uh, site in general. So that's a good, great point. So Matt, having one of the fastest brands in the country right now, one of the, I think you were number... 12 or something in the Inc. 5000 list, right? What, were you, what was your number this last year? Uh, 29, 29 overall. 29 overall, fastest growing coffee company. I mean, if you're talking about 5,000 companies that applied to be here, actually a lot more than that, 29 fastest growing company in the country. What are the things that you're using like as tools, like Facebook ads, Instagram ads, TikTok? Can you talk a little bit about that right now? Yeah, so our kind of bread and butter from the beginning, we still spend about half a million dollars a month or so on Facebook ads, which kind of lumps in Instagram also. And so that's still like the biggest traffic driver. Um, so that, that's a big one. And then we also use every other platform we can get a hold of. I mean, I think affiliates are still super critical for us for like a couple different reasons. Like affiliates nice for like the um, kind of regular sales. I think we probably pay out affiliates like 50 to 100 grand a month or so in commissions. Um, but there's also like another benefit of all the social proof. Like if you were to go out there and Google like, best uh, low acid coffee or something like you're going to see us all over the place. And to me, it's kind of like, great, we're getting those direct sales, affiliate benefits, they make money, but we take those, we put them as screenshots on our landing pages. And like, I imagine there's people that are just sitting there shopping and they're like, wow, like these people are number one everywhere. Like I'm for sure going to go buy from them. Um, so I think there's those benefits too. So affiliates are a big one. And then, uh, yeah, then we use like every other platform we possibly can. We started pushing now like bigger on YouTube ads uh, then we've done some on Snapchat and Pinterest. It's never been super critical for us. And we do all your basic Google search ads. And then me personally, like literally as of like this week, what I'm taking control over so I can really figure it out and then eventually hand it off to somebody else is TikTok. Um, I just think it's insane. Like the opportunity there. I know when we were on the bus in Miami, you were kind of showing me some stuff you were doing on TikTok. I'm seeing the same thing on my like personal brand side. But I'm also applying it on the e-commerce side. So I'm like basically taking control over that from the organic and ads because I think the two go very close together on that platform more than almost any other platform. And so that's the one that I'm like, I think we can really blow it up. Like I know people that have, like they don't have that big of a brand and they literally quadrupled it because some video went viral on TikTok. And so that's one that's interesting, but Facebook's still kind of our bread and butter when it comes to like ad spend and, and sales. Totally. And here's a, a great takeaway from what Matt just said. Obviously, Matt is a marketer himself. Uh, so from my relationships that I worked over the years with great brands, being able to master something before you delegate it. That's what he just said right now. Like he tries to master it, tries to understand how it works, try, tries to make it successful, and then he hands it over. So a lot of people that I work with, they, they expect you to be great at it, but they never even realize it themselves. And that it's going to take more time to succeed in that path. So uh, I love what Matt just said right now. Like you need to master things yourself, especially those of you guys that are listening to this podcast or watching this video right here. You should do that consistently. And that's something that I try to do myself. Like just go out there, get it done, get it applied, figure it out, know what the system is, and then get people to execute on that particular process along the way. Yeah. And that, that's basically what I did with Facebook early on. Like I ran our Facebook ads like, I had done enough, but I was like, I never like, you know, like you had an agency and all that kind of stuff. I just kind of did what was necessary in different businesses, but I ran it myself for the first few months. Then we got to like 30, 40 grand a month in ad spend. Then I had another guy sort of take over at all of it, but I literally did it myself. And I was like, still to this day, it's like all the tracking stuff is like, I'm still terrible at all that, but it's like scrap it enough to kind of figure it out, pick up some momentum and then get somebody who's like way better at it than me. But it's like, I feel like, especially with like agencies, as you probably know, it's like, I feel like a lot of people fail with agencies because they try to hand them like a blank slate. They're like, hey, figure everything out, figure out the funnel, figure out the ads, figure out the conversions. And then it almost always, to me, ends up in like a nightmare. But if you can get some of those pieces in, in place first and have kind of a baseline, then I think your odds of success go through the roof with having somebody else do it. Yeah, totally. Just figure out those templates, those processes, the, the system that you can repeat one, two, three, four. And, and that that's how you make a successful agency. I mean, I have a hundred 
and 12 staff now, and we are pretty good at uniformly getting results for brands across the board. But where we have failed in the past has been when we're not able to export that into a process or a system. So that that's a major thing to do. So Matt, uh, having talked about the platforms that you've actually been advertising on recently, could you give us some advice on content that's working for you? Like I know, for example, right now, in my case, my natural slim brand, we get 25 uh, ROAS, uh, but y I talked to you about that. And the reason why I do that is because I had this fortunate thing to have a content unicorn, which is somebody that is so good at creating content that we just go viral left and right. Like I, I was able to create a TikTok channel. Uh, my father passed away uh, in February of 2021 and he was a content unicorn himself. Uh, so it's been a year and a half and he's still impacting more people today than he did when he was still with us and he was a content unicorn. So we don't have to spend a lot of money to get attention because we have a personal brand. The challenge is what you're doing and you have done it very successfully. And here's the reality. Most people are in the same type of area, like in this, they have the same issue that you conquered yourself, which is how to actually get attention at scale without having a personal brand or a content unicorn. I have been yeah. fortunate that I had a content unicorn. So all I do is I take his content and I lift him up and then we get a lot of attention. And with that attention, we canalize it into, into revenue. But if you take my father out of the equation, what would be the way to go about it? I can tell you that we've used a lot of influencer, not influencer, but uh, user generated content. What is the thing yeah. that has taken life boost into fast hyper growth without having a personal brand talking about your brand? Yeah, so uh, my business partner, the other founder, uh, is Charles Livingston, who I know you know. Um, he's a great guy. He's like the nicest, most honest, most down to earth kind of guy. Not that great on video yet. I think he just hasn't done a whole lot of it. It's like not really whatever he's done because it's like he he came up in the in the world of like video sales letters with like slides and stuff, and so like, he's like in great shape. So they would use like images of him like working out, no shirt on, that kind of thing. And he's like you know a doctor, he's a chiropractor, he's got the credentials, but he's not done a ton of like selling and pushing and content through video so we never really have had that to be able to rely on i just didn't think it made sense to put me because i mean i've done a million videos like put me on camera for like life boost just never seemed like a great fit um so we've had to kind of work around that which i think is nice because it's like a lot of people don't have that also so like early on what worked out well for us and still kind of today is like i don't say clickbait but like and i hate like for lack of a better term like food porn which is kind of like there was, a, there was a company, I think they were called Tasty or something, that would basically just do these, like, videos that were straight on top of somebody making, like, some healthy dish Tasty. or something. Tasty, that's right. And it just like, immediately makes you, like, kind of start salivating and stuff. We found the same thing kind of worked for us for Life Boost. I mean, I remember, like, it's not today, I don't think, but, like, one of our early ads that just helped us a ton was literally just a super close-up shot of a piece of chocolate cake getting cut. Wow. Nothing related to coffee. It just immediately got you thinking about food, immediately got you salivating, stopped you from scrolling. And they're like, what the heck is this? Then they hear us talking about coffee and they click on it. So that worked really well for us. So we've done a lot of variations and we've done some that's probably like worked just as well. But we found out later, which was like super close up, like shots of like delicious looking coffee, you know, cream getting poured and cinnamon thrown on there and all that kind of stuff where people are like, man, I want some coffee. And that kind of grabs their attention. And then our hook is, you know, having healthy, low acid, delicious coffee. And then we go through all the rest of the stuff on the landing page. But those kind of things have worked really well for us. And then also kind of the more standard, like you said, user generated content, uh, mixed mash of like customer testimonial videos with just real raw, like cell phone style videos and mixed in with like a few benefits or features of the coffee. Like those more typical things you see all over the place. Like that's also worked well for us more recently in the past year, year and a half or so. That's amazing. So the moral of the story is attention grabbing yeah. strategies at the end of the day, right? You got to figure out how to get people's attention somehow, because if you don't, there's just too much competition out there. There's literally just yeah. too many people out there trying to grab people's attention. So the way that you stand out is with attention grabbing strategies, content, etc. cetera. So uh, Matt just talked about how even using something that is not directly related to the brand, like a cake, that just pulls the attention in before they start talking about that subject. That's uh, that's a great way to go about it. Like just look for things that can help you capture that attention. So uh, how much do you think it is right now at this point, Mark, uh, Matt, about running, finding ads that are working uh, with good targeting or is it more about the content that you're producing to bring people into your funnel? 
What is your take on, on, on that question? For us, it hasn't really ever been that much about like content because we've never been that great at that side of things. Like we, you know, we produce our blog articles and that kind of thing, but it's never been a huge focus for us because that's not how, it's just not what Charles and I like know well, I guess. Um, you know, on like amazing side, it's like, sure, I can do like webinars and YouTube videos and all that kind of stuff like all day long. But it's like, I don't know what the heck I would talk about for 30 minutes about, you know, a coffee or something like that. That would be more Charles's department. So, so for us, it's been more about like, this is where I think an agency comes into play is because I mean, as you know, it's like, if you're running Facebook ads, for example, at a high volume, you know, like hundred grand plus a month, it's like, you're constantly churning through creatives. And so that's where it's like, I'd be spending literally all day long if I had to do that, like coming up with new little images and videos and stuff like that to test. So that's their job. And they built a team to do that. And so they're constantly churning through those. Like they almost have like an insatiable need for new creative to try out. And so that's kind of been more how we've done it. And we've sent most of the time to the same exact landing page. Like we still cannot beat this old, ugly, long form internet marketing, like 2012 kind of style landing page. Like I've tried to beat it because I'm like, I feel like this is not good for the brand, hmm. but we just can't beat it. And so it's like, we almost sent everything to there while we test other pages. And then our goal has been to get, just get that upfront sale. And then convert into subscription and repeat customers after the fact. And that's where Charles really shine and the team also like great at customer service, great at sorting out issues, great at helping, you know, customers, the product's great. I mean, I, I drink it every day. And so all that stuff, all that magic happens after the fact and converts people into subscribers. And we really just try to get as much traffic that converts up front, usually using the same page. So a lot of it has come through like tons of different ad iterations. That's awesome. So what is the offer that has worked out the most for you guys? Like, how do you get, because here's the thing, obviously you have a coffee brand. Coffee has a very, very wide appeal. And yeah. I think I talked to you about that uh, in Miami. Um, you guys are not really targeting the coffee snubs, right? Because the coffee snub, maybe is not going to be interested in your coffee, even though you have yeah. a good, high quality coffee. So you're, you're really going after a wide, wide audience of people that are, They just want to basically have something that is convenient. They want to be able to get that coffee delivered in their home every month, et cetera. What is the offer that makes it so attractive that you guys are able to get without a face creating content, get people into your landing page that, like you said, it's a, it's a landing page like that's not really anything fancy. You're get, you're able to get them into that landing page and get them interested enough to actually give you their most precious information, credit card, billing address, phone numbers, et cetera. What are you doing? Because it, that offer is incredibly important, right? What is yeah. what is the thing that is making people opt in to what you guys have to offer? I think there's there's two pieces. There's like what I would typically call the hook. And then there's like the actual offer. Like the thing is to me, like the offer is like, what are you selling? What are the price and terms? And then the hook is like, what is grabbing their attention? Like what's going to get them to actually want to even consider buying this thing? Early on, we tested a lot of different hooks. You know, because I think I think we all like when you, when you launch a new business, you have in your head the reason people are going to buy this thing. I mean, that's kind of why you created this. But if you suspended like your sort of conviction for a few minutes and said that, like, what are five other reasons somebody may buy this? That's kind of what we did early on. It was like I can't even remember what all of them were, but it was kind of like, okay, one is just because Charles, the co-founder or original founder, I guess, is, is a doctor. Another one is like, you know, fear angle, like all your coffee is toxic. You're going to die if you keep drinking that stuff. Other one is more, um, you know, environmental sustainability, you know, how it's farmed, how we, what, what organizations we support and that kind of thing. And one was kind of more of like the low acid angle, which is what ended up working the best. We basically threw all those against the wall early on. What are these big reasons that's going to get some random person that's never heard of us before convinced to buy these things? And then we basically tailored an ad and, a, and like really the lead in of a landing page, like 80% of the landing page was the same, but the ad and the lead of the landing page kind of matched for each of those hooks. We found out kind of more of like the low acid angle worked better for us, um, but that was almost a little too niche. So it's kind of like, that's kind of a, a benefit in there, but it's more like the healthiest coffee possible that actually tastes good. It's kind of been our main angle. So it's like, there's some coffees out there that are like, you know, position themselves as super healthy, but maybe they don't taste that good. So ours is like, coffee that is super healthy with basically, you know, it's like high elevation grown, chain grown, certified organic, you know, pesticide free. We test it for 400 toxins, et cetera, et cetera. We, we, we take everything you could possibly imagine and it tastes amazing. And so like, that's the hook that we found worked the best for us. And then the actual offer was the second part, which we also tested the heck out of. And so on the offer side, it ended up working best to basically say, 
50% off your first order, but you have to order either three bags or six bags. We got rid of the one bag option. That's We tested every discount combination you can imagine, every different bag quantity combination, but that's what ended up working out best for us. So that hook combined with that offer. So, so again, you say that again, what was the best offer? Like three to six bags, uh, you were able to find that that discount works the best? 50% discount on either three bags or six bags, literally the same on both of them. Now, which sounds strange because you think that like, you know, marketing kind of convention would be like, oh, it's going to work better. You're going to get a higher average order value if you just give a bigger discount on six bags. The reason I think, and it's easy to say in hindsight, the reason I think this worked for us, which I don't think is going to be the case for everybody, is because I think the six bag almost ends up being like a decoy option where they're kind of like, oh, man, it's like I can get the same, same discount on three bags. Like, why would I order six? And most people do order three. Like, it's very small percentage that end up ordering six. So I think that's why it worked for us. Um, because we, we tested like one bag, three bag, six bag, two, four, eight, you know, one, three, 12, you know, and all and like a small discount on this one, a bigger discount on this one and a bigger discount on this one. We tested like every combination you can imagine. And this is what worked best for us. And, and the thing is that you, you, you guys already obviously know that your product is high quality. You know, people are yeah. going to like it. So you know yeah. that the lifetime value of that customer is extremely valuable. You're going to be able to actually keep on increasing that value over the next few months. So you, yeah. you are comfortable giving a major discount, which is another, by, by the way, it's another takeaway for you guys, right? Like if you feel a strong conviction with your brand and your products, you should be able to comfortably give a major discount because you know you're going to get that person back on your lines. And, and I, I would imagine that on that first purchase, you should be comfortable doing a more aggressive discount because when you look at, you know, some of these other big, big companies, uh, Netflix, Amazon Prime, et cetera, Amazon is willing to, I don't know if you, you, I don't know if you heard that number, but it's somewhere around $220 to get a person to buy a $10 a month subscription for them for the first time. So they know their numbers. They're willing to go very, very in the hole with yeah. bringing that person in because of the lifetime value. So, have you seen a dramatic change in lifetime value with people when they come into lifetime uh, life boost coffee? Yeah, our lifetime value, and I, we've looked at those numbers from the beginning. And there's like a there's maybe other options, but the app that, that I found like pretty nice is called Repeat Customer Insights. It's an app that like helps you look at that data pretty easily. And so we've used that, and so we kind of know our lifetime value in general, and also lifetime value if they sign up for subscription. And so that's allowed us to remain like super aggressive because early on. It's like, you know, we never put our, we never really put any cash into this business. We never raised outside money. So basically the whole business went from like 17 grand a month when I started working with Charles in January of 2019 to like, you know, 2.7 million a month now, all funded off the cash flow of the business. And so like early on when we didn't have a ton of sales, we basically didn't want to lose money for very long. So we had to basically break even in like month one or two. Now we're happy to acquire customers, even if we don't break even for a year or two. And then because that allows us to like stay hungry and stay aggressive. So it's like other people want to jump in and they see what we've done and they want to sell coffee and stuff. They're probably not going to be as good at marketing and they probably don't have the funding or because, uh, you know, half of our sales are subscription. So that funds a lot of customer acquisition. And so that allows us to be super aggressive on customer acquisition still at this stage, even though like. I mean, you know, once you, once you get to a certain level of ad spend on some of these platforms, every incremental customer you get is going to be more and more expensive. And so we're still totally fine with that and still pushing hard on like every ad channel. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Uh, okay. That's great, Matt. So, um, so what, what you guys have a formula that works for scaling now, and you're going to keep on figuring that out and you're going to keep on adding more like platforms along the way. What do you see as the next big opportunity for you guys to keep on growing life boost? Because obviously to repeat this growth in 2022, and I know you guys are on track right now, what are things that you're seeing as major opportunities right now to pay attention to? Bigger one for us that this is new for us. So it's us having to pick up new skills, um, but it's on the retail and wholesale side. It, it may not be like as critical for every sort of typical e-commerce business, but, be a, but because ours is like a grocery product, we've surveyed our customers and something like two thirds of them still buy their groceries in a grocery store, which may sound obvious. I don't know, but it's like some other products. You're like, what percent of people buy their, you know, tripods in a physical retail store? It's going to be like 10%. Like you just go to Amazon, but with grocery products, just because it's still kind of easier just to roll up to the grocery store and load your cart up. Um, so for us being a grocery product, the thing is, is like, 
And I know there was an exercise like Charlie Munger, like Warren Buffett's business partner went through. He kind of like reverse engineered how you build a Coca-Cola, like as a brand, like this, you know, whatever, hundreds of billions of dollars. Um, so for us, it's kind of like one key thing is being available everywhere. Because like there's going to be a time when somebody who's a super loyal customer to us is out of coffee. They roll up to their grocery store. We're not in that grocery store. They throw somebody else's in the cart. And all of a sudden, they're their customer and maybe they're gone for us forever. And so I think for us, being a grocery product that's still primarily bought in grocery stores, we've got to solve the kind of whole, wholesale retail sort of thing. Because people, do, you know, they drink it every day. So they're not necessarily like planning way out like, oh, I'm going on a trip. I'm going to have my coffee with me. And I, I try to bring it. But even me, I'm like, man, I wish this stuff was just in a grocery store. So I feel like solving that piece is big for us. And then also kind of just making the coffee available in more forms. Like we're in, you know, bags and beans and K-cups, but we need to be in espresso. We need to be in like ready to drink, uh, cold brew. Also like uh, some of these other newer kind of forms, like concentrated cold brew. It's like, there's no excuse we should give people to not drink our coffee just because it's in a different form. So it's like solving some of those product things and also wholesale retail, I think is big for us while we just keep pushing a million miles an hour online. Yeah, just uh, expand the product offering. That's a big one. Just yeah. keep on adding all the different forms that people can consume your product, which is something yeah. applicable to basically any of us, right? Like at the agency side of things, if I'm delivering services, I want to keep on adding other areas to service. For example, right now we're launching a service to do TikTok management and TikTok ads. And, and then I want to be able to expand and do content creation for brands uh, at scale. And then, you know, there's, I, I'm opening up a new branch called AGN Studios in which we're going to build like different scripts and content in our, in our studios for, for companies. So you got to keep on always creating offers and services to deliver to more to your client base to keep them in your ecosystem that that's a great one right there so Matt, yeah it's a good point like uh, i um i know covid changed everything for for most of us uh we experienced like a major um ourselves like we went from pre-covid doing 20 million dollars a year to next uh during covid 40 million dollars to now 50 so it, it's something that really changed the industry and the e-commerce in general. Like e-commerce is no longer e-commerce. It's just like commerce, right? It should be yeah. probably rebranded at some point uh, because, because it's been taken, like it's, it's, it's the way that we do commerce in general now. But I still go to the grocery store and it's still packed in a big way. Yeah. So that's a really good point right there because there's people that still, even though we have Instacart and we have all these other players trying to make it easier for all of us to get our groceries it's still a big deal right so i like the omnipresent approach you want to be everywhere like if somebody goes and let's say they buy uh, starbucks every day and then they go to the grocery store and they see life boost coffee there and then they love life boost coffee and they really really appreciate the flavor and all of it and they googled you guys and they find the membership then starbucks is going to lose that client right so it's a it's a major major strategy for 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 you guys to execute on so that's really good so do you have any particular process to execute on so you can get on retail with your high quality products yeah that's what we're kind of like sorting our way through because we've talked with some different people and we've got uh kind of some answers that i don't like so far like this one guy i think knows a lot about retail he's like oh yeah it's gonna take like you know three million dollars and it's gonna take two years before you ever make any money um and part of me just like doesn't believe some of this because i'm like i literally know a guy for example like his family they own like however many like 100 different gas stations or something like around texas and I know he was like turning some, because I mean, like a regular gas station, probably not a good fit for like a premium coffee, but he's turning some of them over into like premium with like premium snacks and stuff. And I've seen that sort of thing in Austin. And I'm like, hey, I was like, I want to get our coffee in your thing. I was like, I'll front the order or whatever. Like, I don't care. Like, we just want it in some retail presence and like, he'll probably do it. And it's like, I feel like there's a hundred relationships like that, that can kind of like skirt around this like typical retail thing. It's like, sure. Maybe it's like, if you want to get into like Whole Foods overnight or whatever, it's like, they may have their own process. But there's like a million smaller retailers that I'm like, okay, we'll give them the business. And while these other people have this like super long turnaround time and like pain in the ass kind of terms, it's just like, I don't have a lot of patience for that sort of thing. <laughs> and I think that's kind of like how we've grown so fast. And so it's like exploring some of those angles also. Otherwise, yeah. it's like typical approach is you hire somebody who's done this forever. You fund it with some good amount of money. You just kind of realize it's, it's going to take a few years. That's kind of the backup plan, I guess. Love it. So a little takeaway from what Matt just said. 
I don't have any patience for it. That's why we've grown so fast. It's absolutely yeah. the way to go about it, right? So not having patience is an amazing virtue that we share as entrepreneurs, right? It, I like to describe it, Matt, as uh, you got to have a combination of patience and unpatience, right? Because it doesn't really happen overnight. So a lot of people actually give up really fast because they don't see the results happen overnight. So they don't have the patience, but it, it yeah. really it really is one of those dichotomies, right? It, it's re, it's, you got to be un, impatient. But at the same yeah. time, you got to have patience because if you're not patient, you're going to get upset about not seeing an explosion of revenue or like massive things happening in your business when it doesn't really happen like that. So both yeah. elements have to be combined. I think that another way to describe it is you got to have an obsession over your particular brand, like a massive obsession over making it uh, successful while you have patience to seeing it become successful, like overseeing the process. That's really good. So with people like you and myself, like that's uh, a common denominator that you'll see across all of us that we got really obsessed and we wanted to make sure that we had no barriers. Like somebody tells you it's going to take you $2 million and two years before you get your money back. No, absolutely not. Get the heck out of the way. I'll figure it out myself, right? Because you're not going to accept an answer that doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. No matter what is what the industry is saying to you. Uh, yeah. So, Matt, one, uh, as we're wrapping up, uh, you mentioned something uh, earlier during the interview that I believe is very valuable for anybody out there trying to go down a similar route, building their own brand. And that is the process of finding affiliates to help you promote their brand. And the fact that you're maybe cutting $100,000 checks, $200,000 checks every month to these affiliates. I'm fascinated by that particular idea, especially for brands that don't really have a face like we get to have with Dr. Berg or uh, my father or like all these guys that I work with, what is a path for somebody to say, to say, okay, I want to reach out to affiliates. that want to make some money with their existing traffic and I want to yep. have them promote my products and have them get my product in front of more people. And that process, wh what is one major takeaway that you can give the audience in regards to how to get that process started for them? Yeah. So I just went through this example for, um, uh, you know Mike McClare, who's been involved in ASM forever. So he's got a he's got a brand that sells like lanterns and flashlights and stuff. And so I was like, okay, let's use his. He's got this like I don't have it with me. It's upstairs, but it's like this high end sort of like super intense flashlight. It's for like kind of self defense, kind of you know blind someone. You can probably hit him over the head, like <laughs> that kind of thing. And so for him, I'd be like, okay, I literally Google like best self defense flashlight, and there's like these random websites that pop up. One of them was like the soldiers project.org or something like that. But it's basically just an affiliate site. I think this guy, maybe a guy that was in the military or whatever, but he's done like SEO and he basically just reviews a bunch of like, supposedly reviews a bunch of products, but they're basically just promoting Amazon affiliate link stuff. And so like, if you look at Amazon affiliate commissions, they're making like one to 5%. And literally the number one product he's recommending as like the best self-defense fl defense flashlight is this tiny little pink flashlight on Amazon. I'm like, there's no way this is objectively the best self-defense flashlight. So I'm like, he's just making Amazon affiliate commissions. So it's like, I would con I would do this for your market. And then you find sites like that, contact them and say, hey, you know, we, and you, I would make a really aggressive affiliate offer. Because it's like, once you get the customer once, I don't think you have to keep paying them. Like make them like a really aggressive affiliate offer, you know, basically break even for you. Like give them all the profits on that first order. And so design your affiliate program like that. And then you go to these people and you say, hey, you know, I'll give you this affiliate commission that's going to be 10, 20 times higher than what you're going to get from Amazon. And I'll even prepay you some of the commissions. Because the big thing these people are going to be thinking is like, I don't know you. Like, why am I going to take the time to swap out this on my website, promote your product that may not be that great? And it's like, obviously, you can send it to them and stuff. Um, but it's still kind of a little bit of a leap of faith for them. So I would offer to pay them in advance. This is literally what we did early on with Life Boost. I was wow. like, hey, you're making a thousand, you're making a thousand bucks from this Amazon coffee product you're promoting. I'll pay you three thousand for the first month, like guaranteed, regardless of how many sales we do. Three thousand minimum. And then we blew them out of the water because we had a way better, better affiliate offer and a good converting page. And then all of a sudden, like they want to keep us there forever. They want to add us to more pages. I take that example. I go to all of their competition, all the other people ranking. I'm like, hey, we're already doing this here. They're making three times more money than they were before. And like at the end of the day, like affiliates, like they want to make money. Like that's the main thing they're after. They, most of them want to protect their reputation. So they're not going to promote some like terrible company, terrible offer, terrible product. But as long as you meet those basic requirements, it's ultimately, it's all about who makes them the most money. So you got to make them an offer 
that's going to make them more money than anything else they promote. And then I think it's easy to find those kind of people. Wow. That was, that's absolute fire right there, Matt. I love it. So, so here's the thing. Google is still being searched for. Uh, yeah. People are using Google a lot to find things. Like the other day, I'm I'm doing research on I'm putting a guest house. Um, I'm expanding a guest house in my house and just making it like modern, etc. And I'm looking for best projectors uh, because yeah. I'm putting a big 150 inch projector. I'm like best projectors for outdoor. And I realized this as as I was actually finding these websites that were whatever results were showing up, the non sponsored ones just the organic results. When I clicked on them, it was a guy doing an article of the 10 best projectors. And as I was clicking on these things, it dawned on me that these are all affiliate links. So that's, yeah. that's what it is. So even though it looks like it's organic and it's somebody out of their heart wanting to provide value on projectors, they're literally just using their positioning and their SEO to try to get in front of more people and try to get a commission on Amazon for their referral. So that is, it, it, it's it literally just happened to me last week. So what you said right now, I've actually have an executor on that strategy that is absolutely brilliant because all you gotta do is some, I would imagine that Matt, you guys have a spreadsheet of sorts and you start doing all these keyword searches and then you find all these websites that are coming out and then you somehow find on the contact information on the website, how to get in front of these people and be like, listen, Mike is, Mike is a friend of mine, uh, so I know him well. Uh, that flashlight that you have there is absolute garbage. Uh, yeah. I have one that's really high quality. So in order for you to protect your reputation, uh, I, I wanna allow you to put this one in front and you don't have to send it to Amazon anymore. I'll give you a direct link to my store and instead of getting 1%, I'm gonna give you a 50% or 30% or whatever that is, especially flashlights might not be the best example because it's, it doesn't have really repeat business in the same way that you guys have in Life Boost, but with you guys knowing how people keep on buying your coffee, I mean, it's yeah. worth it to give them everything you got, right? Like even breaking even or losing some money because here's the thing that you guys gotta keep in mind with that strategy, and I'm gonna work on executing this same thing, Matt. You gotta keep in mind that if you're gonna pay Facebook ads, if you are a great marketer yourself, if you invest a dollar and get three dollars back, you can celebrate that you're doing great, right? Yeah. So you're even though you're not making a lot of money maybe you're breaking even or whatever one to three roi is fucking awesome it's great right like most people that i know on facebook are not accomplishing that uh, i know because i have people that come to us with struggles and they're struggling trying to get one to three so let's say that you have a hundred dollar product if you spend 33 dollars to get that product sold you're doing a decent job on facebook you really are so if you take those $33 and instead of giving it to Facebook, you give it to an affiliate, it, it is, it's something that you can really go deep on. It makes a lot of sense to go down that route. I don't say that you replace, I would not say that you replace Facebook ads with this. I say that it's an additional strategy to take advantage of a traffic that is happening. People like me just looking for projectors right now, uh, if or for anything, we're still searching on Google more than we're searching on anywhere else. So you want to leverage that. I think that is an absolute brilliant strategy to execute on. It's really good stuff. Yeah, and it's crazy. It's like a lot. All these people will be willing to lose money all day long on every ad channel. Here's more money to Facebook. Here's more money to Google. Here's more money to like Snapchat or TikTok or whatever. And most of them are losing money all day long. And maybe sometimes they, you know, maybe they break even after like six months or whatever. Um, but then they then they come up with their affiliate program and they're like, I'm only giving ten percent. And I'm like. You should be able to, <laughs> I like the affiliate stuff because it's kind of like, it's only performance. It's like, if you forget a Facebook ad is running and it's performing terribly, you're going to lose money all weekend, all week, all month until you remember that Facebook ad to go shut it off. On affiliates, it's because you're paying them like per sale, not really per click or whatever, which isn't really a thing in e-commerce um, or per lead, you know, like some other businesses, it's really just per sale. So it's kind of like, you could go to sleep for the next like two years and it's like, if they make a sale, you pay them. If they don't make a sale, you pay them nothing. Amazing. So it's like very, very little risk for you. As long as you like monitor the basic kind of affiliate manipulation stuff, you got to make sure they're not like doing something shady, but otherwise it's like, it's nice because it's just paper performance. And I love what you said as a, as a strategy to get in front of these people. Again, they need money. These people are, yeah. are generally, they're good copywriters. They're good. Like, you know, like they've been around for a long time. They maybe position their website 
in the early days and they, they're getting all this love from Google, it's great, but they might not be great entrepreneurs. They might not be great business owners. They might not have their own brand. So they need money. Just like there's a lot of influencers that are great at capturing attention, but they have no clue how to sell their own products. You want to leverage that particular attention right there. And I love your strategy. Like I would imagine that you give, you guys give them a little contract and you say, all right, so I'm going to give you this check for free grand. You're getting a thousand dollars from Amazon. If so, I'm going to give you a free thousand dollar check right now up front. I'm paying you for the commission ahead of time. And every, after this one, you're going to get paid after sales, after we catch up, but here's a free grand check. Uh, thank you for considering us as part of your website. And here we yeah. go. And that way you prove yourself to, to be for real. Like I'm yeah. the owner of Life Boost. I'm the owner of Natural Slam or whatever your brand is. Here's a contract. Here's a check. Go ahead and put them on your, on your, on your website. Thank you for doing business. I think that is amazing. Great, great stuff, Matt. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I feel like you got to reduce the risk for them because they're probably getting hit up by this kind of thing. Like probably not as much as they should be. But they're probably getting hit up all day long by people who are like, can you review our coffee? Can you, or whatever product is, can you review our flashlight? Can you review our flashlight? And they're just kind of like, the page is already making money. They don't want to have to mess with it. But if somebody's like, hey, I'll increase your commissions and I'll pay you in advance, like that's going to get their attention. And it's like, not everyone's going to respond, but like, who cares? It's like, if two out of 10 respond, like, totally worth it. Amazing. Amazing. Well, Matt, um, I go way back with you. Uh, there, uh, um, potentially before the first time that you ever heard about me, I was already consuming your stuff for somewhere around four to five years. Uh, you might have started hearing about me along the way because I was training people on Facebook and other things along yeah. the way. But man, do I go way back. I remember watching your stuff, you and Jason, uh, Jason Cassis band. Um, and um, obviously I did a lot of stuff with Jason Fladen, who was one of your top affiliates. But I remember watching your course, Amazing Selling Machine, somewhere around 2013, so nine years ago still dreaming about building a business and dreaming about being well financially. And I used to sit down in my kitchen, had a small little 35 inch TV and just watch your content. And I recall it as if it was yesterday. And if there's one thing I always admired about you, you're, you're such a great teacher. You're a great, great educator. It's very easy to, to follow you and to understand what you're saying. You're like a natural educator. So that, that was something that I really appreciated about you. And I went for your modules and I executed in it. And the rest is history, right? So Matt, I know you are teaching people about Shopify now. You're doing some cool things uh, on that side of things. And you're teaching people about your journey and, and what's working on the platform. And I'm sure people that are listening to this podcast or watching this video want to find out more about how they can learn more from you and what you got going on. So why don't you tell them a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we, um, you know, after this whole experience with Amazon, you know, however many years of teaching people how to do that thing, helping people build all these e-commerce businesses, then kind of like getting back in the game myself and like building this coffee company over the past few years, I realized that there's like a massive opportunity for people to take what we've learned to either build businesses from scratch in e-commerce that are not dependent on Amazon, but use Amazon or also if they're like, if people are selling like 90% on Amazon and they're just frustrated to learn how to use what we've done on Shopify to at least complement, if not exceed their Amazon sales on Shopify. And so we've run through a couple of beta programs and those are closed now. And we actually have a full blown program now. And so um, easiest way to get there is just go to DTC as a direct to consumer hero, H E R O.com. Eventually we'll probably replace all of amazing.com with this, but right now you can't really find it on there. So that's one way. Also my Instagram is great. Matt Clark TX. I include links on there, more free content and that kind of thing. So those are great options. Um, so I include kind of like content sharing, how we've done this stuff, what we've done, the general kind of principles, show screenshots and all that kind of stuff. And it never makes sense for people to join our full program. That would be cool too. Awesome. DTCHero.com. Direct to consumer. Uh, Hero.com. DTCHero.com. So you guys can check out Matt Clark and follow him on Instagram. Uh, somebody that I believe in his ability to give value. Matt, thanks for being here with us today. I appreciate it. I think we're going to give a lot of value to people and hopefully they get into execution. We'll have to do this again. I know we're helping you right now with a project to at our agency to uh, make your brand even better, add a little value to uh, to what you guys have going on right now. So hopefully we can make that very successful and talk about that in the future uh, also along the way. All right. Thanks for being yeah, with yeah, us today. For sure. Yeah, we'd love to. Yeah, thanks, Manuel. All right. Okay, Matt. See you on the next episode, guys. Thanks for tuning in. All right, see ya.